Hi everyone, welcome back to another Strangely Us podcast. Strangely Us. Strangely Us with myself, Mark English, and... Wendy. Hello, Wendy. And Henry. And Henry. Look, Henry's here, everybody. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see lovely Henry. He's just chilling out now. He might get up during the podcast, but... He probably will. Yeah. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, now you're here... What we're going to do today on this podcast is actually talk about something which is quite fun. I think a lot of people will do this, actually, is if you are holding a dinner party, who would be your five guests, either living yep. or dead? Yep. Uh, now, I said to you earlier on, the chance of me ever doing a dinner party is absolutely zero because I'm the world's worst I'm cook. I'm disappointed. I can't, I've learned to cook, actually, in the last year or so. Right. Because looking after my mum. Um, okay, you could I've, do yeah, it. Yeah, I've been... Yeah, not going to do that. But I can do a full... I can, I can do a pretty good roast. I can do a pretty good roast. Um, that's smoky look there, darling. <laughs> I'm looking to find out, yeah, darling. Yeah, soon, very soon. I'll, I'll cook you a nice roast. Uh, okay. So roast I'm getting good at. But uh, generally, I'm not, I'm not a cook. Yeah. I'm not a cook. Um, but one, one adapts to the situation. One adapts, yeah. yes. So yeah. what we're doing, we're going back and forth, and we're going to talk about who our um, top five... Um, what is that five guests... Well, we'll be the six. We're, 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 the six. we're very close here, aren't we? We're we are. Very, we're very, we're very, very close. close. We're very, very close. Henry's like kind of come between us, really. Hasn't yeah, he? Henry. Yeah, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> um, so, first question to you, Henry. Uh, Henry. <laughs> My first question to you, um, Wendy, is: Do you hold dinner parties, or have you ever held a dinner I party? I do like to hold a dinner party, and I have held a dinner party, and I like to cook. You do like to cook, yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm finding it quite enjoyable, I have to admit. It's been a while since I've had a dinner party, uh-huh. so maybe that would be a good excuse to have one. Yeah. I'll come. Okay. I've just uh, invited myself, look at that. You just inv- well, you, you'd be here anyway, Yeah, I look at sword, cool yeah. sword. Yeah. So, I'll start with you. Who would be your first dinner guest that you'd have? <gasps> Bear in mind, these people say living or dead, uh, anyone from history. Yes, they've got, most of them would be probably well-known figures. Um... People spoke like, oh, I'd have Jesus in there, but he wouldn't understand you because he speaks Arabic. Um, oh, he would know everything. He'd know everything. Yeah, what's the point? Um, so who would you be your first guest? This is really hard because there's a lot of people that have gone over that I would love to see again and have at my table. It was very hard to have to pick them. But I think you and I have kind of said if we were having an entertaining dinner party. So my first one... Probably, and he's the, he comes to mind straight away. Is Kenny Everett? <laughs> Hello, oh, the brilliant Kenny Everett. I think Kenny would make any dinner party or any party be absolute fun. Anyone under thirty won't know who Kenny Everett is. Well, they need to Google and Kenny and Everett video him. show. Re- required viewing, wasn't it? Required viewing. He would have to come uh, in his full gear of Rod Stewart mm. with a leopard skin. Oh, I see. It's not here. Yeah. Yeah. And, Cupid stunt. Uh, yeah, and I just think he'd be amazing. He was funny. He was. He's intelligent. He was kind. He would just be. He'd be like flamboyant. He'd bring wonderful wine, and I'm sure he'd bring wonderful. You know, I've got one here. Yeah, wonderful food and everything. I I just think Kenny Everett would yeah, have been mine. brilliant. And also, like, if he wanted to do a little. You know, for me, growing up and hearing that, as you say, the in the all done in the best possible oh, taste. taste. Um, and what was the one when he was always doing the the Spider Man? The Spider Man, yeah, yeah. And he um, always wanted to go to pee, and he was trying to get out. The and costume. then there was the the, the Marcel Marceau. Yeah, yeah, like he. I just thought he was really, really good. Yeah. So he'd be my first. With all due respect to my friends, and I know a very good friend who's actually used to study mime. When was mime ever called? Yeah, true. Yeah, is is when Kenny Everett did it. Yeah, um, mime yeah. is a weird one. I was like, oh, okay, you can do that. You can do that. What? Um, each of their own. Um, yeah, very one weird one that. Um, okay, yeah, good Kenny Everett. I like Thank Kenny. You. Bear in mind, all our guests probably won't get on with each other. No, you know. But that's the thing because they're so eclectic. Yeah. Well, I'll keep it light. And the person, the first person who'd be at my dinner table, he'd absolutely hate it. Carl Pilkington uh-huh. from the Ricky Gervais show. Those who know who Carl Pilkington is, he's the um, old from the old Rick, Ricky Gervais podcast with him and Stephen Merchant. And why would you have Carl? Because he's he is unintentionally the world's funniest man mm-hmm. without even trying. That's how Ricky discovered him. Yeah. He was a producer on the old uh, Radio XFM um, uh, show back in the early 2000s. And Ricky and Stephen were brought back to XFM after being fired 
But then they did The Office and they came back, as Ricky said, to Conquering Heroes. Yeah. And they gave Ricky and Steve a producer, which was Carl Pilkington. And on one of the earliest radio shows, they asked a question and just asked it to Carl. And he came out with this most extraordinary answer. And it was just comedy gold. Mm. I think they're talking about Callum Best, who's George's, George's best son. And they go, well, he's only famous because of who his dad was. And Carl Pilkington said, you know, you could say the same about Jesus. Yeah. And I thought True. that would be absolute comedy gold. And he, just, he doesn't even try. He doesn't yeah. even try. He's just really, really funny. I don't get Star Trek. I work in theatre. I don't get Star Trek. I would a little bit with him. I listen to their podcast nearly most times. Did you admire days. him? Yeah. I like his honesty. He, yeah, he, he hates being famous. I don't, you know, but it, yeah. he's great. I think he'd be a really, uh, really good guest, actually. So, yeah. so he would be your number he, one? Yeah. No, no, these are in no particular order, I should okay. add. But yeah, he'd be my number one. Okay. All right. You know, what we have in a week? I don't like that. You know, with the Manchester accent. Yeah. 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 Carl Pilkington would be one of them. What would be your number two? Well, actually... What is your this number is two? The, my number two, darling, is um, very similar to my number one. It is Freddie Mercury. Oh. I mean, when you see interviews with him, his, his personality and his, his cheekiness. I would have loved to have been at one of Freddie's parties. And I absolutely adored him, loved his music, I just thought he was brilliant. He doesn't. Taken too soon. Um, great dignified how he, how he left this earth. Um, but what a great party it would be, because he'd be, between him and Kenny, it would just be like completely mad. And it would. Were it they would, friends, or did they know they each other? They were friends, yeah. and they were lovers at one point oh, too. I didn't know that. I believe, I think they were. Well, I mean, I think they actually shared the same lover who gave. Sadly, gave them HIV. A, yeah, HIV. Um, Which is now something people don't really yeah. know. Pretty much, I think I'm, I'm right in saying, um, you know, I've got a lot of gay friends. So they've pretty much, I think, cured now, or it can be controlled. You don't get the deaths yeah. from it now, yeah. which is an amazing step forward. I mean, to me, like, you know, Freddie would probably, you know, darling, like Freddie, there would just be, there would just be great fun to have. Hmm. And I really would love to have him singing or just have, talk to him. And, you know, I'd love to have that. Um, and he's such a showman. Yeah. To me, one of my favourite songs that he ever did was Who Wants to Live Forever. From Highlander Soundtrack. And that's one of my songs I want on my funeral list when I go. Uh, because to me, to hear that beautiful voice fill the room... Uh, I just think it would be great. And also, like, you know, I loved his outfits. He's so flamboyant, like Kenny. They'd be great. Great yeah. company. Oh, I like that. That's a very good very good choice. I love a story he did where he squared up to Sid Vicious once. They're recording in the same studio, uh, recording yeah. studio. And Sid Vicious came in the studio, pissed out of his head. And uh, Freddie Mercury just got up, went up to him and just threw him out, you know, yeah. calling it, really taking yeah. the piss. I thought that was good because... Um, I think even um, Johnny Rotten once said that Sid Vicious was about as tough as a paper bag, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, Freddie Mercury, nice but I, one. But I also think as well with Freddie, although he was so known for his parties and flamboyant, he also was very lonely in, in a lot of his life. Um, and I so I think you could have a really good conversation about a lot of things yes. with him. And it wouldn't just be like, just wouldn't just be the fun and the party time. It would be like, tell me about this as well. Freddie um, and so yeah I, I just think him and Kenny you'd have to put them you'd have to put them on different sides of the table because if you put them directly opposite oh my god oh you my wouldn't, you yeah, wouldn't yeah. get anything done well, no you wouldn't even you'd be like laughing too much wouldn't you when a uh, guy working in theatre when Brian May's wife Anita Dobson was doing a couple of play, a couple of plays actually this is when I first started at the theatre mm. uh, the one I work at now and Brian May they live locally they came he come by to see her after the show and all that kind of thing Lots to learn, learn my name and everything. Such a nice guy. I wanted to talk to him about astrophysics, you know, yeah. but really nice guy, Brian May. I, I like Brian May because he wants to save the badgers, you know, and I'm all for that. But, uh, and he did a really big thing about yeah. that. I mean, you know, if you could have all of them, but we're, we're having to be mi- minimalistic yeah, and stick to five. But yeah, I actually think Freddie and Kenny would be perfect. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, very and good. Your number two? My number two yeah. is in the toilet. <laughs> Okay. Um, as um, now that's where you resonate a little bit here, darling. Mm-hmm. Um, as lifelong Doctor Who fans, I will say Tom Baker, right? Because Tom Baker back in the day was a real, I think, one of the sort of quite a heavy drinker and yeah. could tell some amazing stories. If you've ever watched interview with Tom, he's very forthright. You know, it's not a person who, who suffers falls gladly. I think he's mellowed in his later years, but the stories he comes out with are absolutely extraordinary about the business and all that. Um, I've met him a couple of times actually once, once professionally and twice just as I randomly had to be there mm. um, but yeah I'd say Tom Baker because he was my doctor 
he's such a character. Yeah. I mean, the voice. Ah. Oh. Yeah. And you know the stories. Is I mean, I need to read his autobiography. I still haven't read that. Uh, Jack, uh, some who on earth is Tom Baker? Which I have. I need to read that. And uh, it's I don't do autographs. I don't do autographs. I think they're the weirdest things ever. But he signed uh, my book, uh, his his autobiography, and it to Mark One from Who for. Oh, that nice. That's really to lovely. Mark One, Mark to Mark One from Who for. That's very really cool. Yeah. Very, very nice. And I mean, um, you'd ask him, wouldn't you? His memories from Doctor Who. You would ask him. And I know he's got like probably lots of them, but I loved his last. He, he did that cameo in Day of the Doctor. Day of the Doctor, yeah. And, and he uh, didn't really enjoy that much from what, from what interviews it is. But he loved Matt Smith. He got on really well with Matt Smith. I he used to stick now. Yeah, yeah, a bit of arthritis. Bless him. It's all arthritis. But the yeah. voice was just. I thought an interview. If you see an interview with him from just from last year, his voice is exactly the same. Yeah. He does all the. If those who know the big Finnish audios are. Yeah. The Doctor Who audios, which I've done a couple. Um, he, his voice is pretty much the same, almost. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But Tom Baker. Right. Okay. We're in pass now. Oh, it's getting good. We might, if we find time, we might go beyond and just do random thoughts off the top of our head. What's your number three? <sighs> <laughs> um, that would be John Candy. Okay. Um, I absolutely admire. You said that before, haven't you? Like John Candy. John yeah. Candy is somebody I think would be an amazing another another one at the dinner table. Canadian from Toronto died too early. Yes. Um, great comedian, but also a very sensitive guy. Um, very deep in lots of, I don't of know ways. You. Did you know him well? Then? No, but I've watched a lot of interviews. Right. So I really got to... I'm a bit of a... Bit I know of a very little about John Candy, apart from his bit in the Blues Brothers. And no, I mean, he was in Uncle Buck, obviously. Yeah. Home Alone. Um, uh, now, that's the one that... Very quick, can I just pause yeah, you? Yeah, of course you can. We'll have to do something about popular cultural films or music. I've never seen Home Alone. I've never even seen the original Top Gun. Yeah. So I, I can't have I no point of reference. Oh, yet, good. Me and still. you're on the same page. There, good. I Sorry, interrupting. Um, but he, I mean, he's done loads of other films. I'm just using those two as examples because people will probably know those ones. But for me, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles was his. You know, he played such a. We have to watch that. Yeah. Oh yes, you said yes. Um, we, heard the, we heard the play, which had Michael Prade in. Yeah, yeah. It had Michael Prade, Robin Sherwood. But um, John Candy, which is, I just think him, him, Freddie, and Kenny would be such a great match. You know, what a great... The three of them around the table would be kind of really good conversations yeah. and really interesting. So for me, yeah, definitely. And I probably want John... I'd ask him so many things about, you know, all of his movies. And um, and also, what he... I'd also ask him what he would have liked to have achieved if he hadn't gone too soon. Yeah. Probably he's, not. He'd like to achieve of not dying, probably. Well, yeah, that would be one, yeah. obviously. He was but, a big lad, though, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, sadly he was. 40, and he died the same way as his dad, mm. in his sleep. And his dad was 40 and he was 40. Oh, that's how age is So it's really, really sad. Yeah. Um, and I think we lost uh, a comedian genius there because he was, you know, he... I mean, is it Spaceballs? Have you ever seen that? I, I've never seen Spaceballs. It's just... I'm going to be very controversial. People go, what? But this bloke made the producers. I've never found... Um, Oh my goodness me! Who who produced Spaceballs and producers? I've got a complete blank. Yeah, oh too. no! Don't do that on a podcast, uh, please. Someone will tell us in the comments. Um, yeah, I've got his face right in front of me. I've never found his films funny at all. I've never found the producers funny. Is it Mel or something? Thank you, Mel, uh, Mel, Mel Brooks. Brooks. Yeah. Um, Blazing Saddles. I'm stony faced. Yeah. I don't find him funny at all. Yeah. He was funny in Cobra Enthusiasm when he did his camera in Cobra Enthusiasm, um, which leads me on to my next one. I think they just quickly end on John when he does that scene in Planes and Trains right at the end, and he, he, he without if you've never seen the movie, I would suggest you go and see it, uh, or what, you know, rent it or hire it or whatever, buy it. But literally, it, it was, it's so much emotion in him that you see this big guy who's a, who's so good with the comedy, and he comes right down to this, and you, you feel for the guy, you really feel for him, and I think that he was so good at and as an audience i want someone who can make me feel a mixture of emotions right like a bit of a roller coaster when i'm watching something and he did so sorry that's very my good point. very good my point it's very good on to you now I couldn't, it's all sort of entertainment i'm gonna really be quite solemn actually no i'm gonna bring 
now look at going on the entertainment but the other two are, are a bit more solemn I I was stuck I know I've mentioned Carl Pilkington and I was stuck between Ricky Gervais and Larry David right. and Curb and Enthusiasm and I've had to go with Larry David because I just like him to see him being totally uncomfortable in the situation saying what he thinks uh, I don't know if you know Curb Your Enthusiasm. Curb Your Enthusiasm, have you ever seen it? No. Right, okay. Um we a bit of a one-sided conversation. You there. tell me all about it. Uh, Larry, Curb Your Enthusiasm is the guy who co-created Seinfeld. Bizarrely, I've never seen Seinfeld, but I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. So I think it's my favourite comedy. Um, but Larry Davis is an American writer, and he's playing a twisted version of himself. Mm-hmm. And he has no filter. Absolutely no filter. He'll say what it is. It's about, I mean, really controversial subjects. You know, you can't cancel that. La- like Ricky Gervais, you could not cancel Larry David. You can't yeah. cancel Ricky Gervais. You know, and they do everything from paedophilia to yeah, everything's everything's on the on the cards. Yeah, and it's really really funny. So yeah, Larry David just so he could be really uncomfortable and take the piss out of everyone. I think yeah. So what number was that? Was that your that was number your number three? I think it was my number. Th- uh, I've got, a bit, I've got a bit of paper here. It's got the paper. Yeah, it's my number three. That's my number, number three. three. And I'm yeah. on my number three. I'm yeah. on number three. So my number four is quite an interesting choice, and that would be God. Which one? Just just the main one. Which one's that? Well, exactly. But I would just have I think God. A, I think that's a fair question. Which one? Um, there's, thousands, there's, there's been 2,500 recorded God It doesn't shoots. matter what name he comes under, anything else. Just the main the main man upstairs. Let's just put it that oh, way. Oh, the man. Well, I think so. In my in my vision, he's a man, but I would have him here or, or them or whatever mm-hmm. you want to say, and I'd say, and I actually think what an interesting conversation that would be around the dinner table with Freddie. Everyone would be really uncomfortable. Freddie, though. no, because like, I'm sure he would be very relaxed in himself. <laughs> he's come for dinner, right? You've got Freddie and John and Kenny, um, but I'd ask him lots of questions. And um, would you more? Wouldn't you more prefer a one on one? With, no, with, with no. I think I might feel safer with with company than one on one. But I would love to ask God, whichever your God is, whoever you follow, um, I would like to ask or a higher being, whatever you want to put it. I would like to ask them certain questions. Why higher this? being? That's better. Why? Why this? Why that? You know, um, and and what the plan was? You know, what what happened before and where we are now and where we're going to? I would like that those answers because. It's the greatest mystery, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's the greatest mystery. So why not invite them to dinner? You know, why not invite this higher power to, to dinner and say, right, now you're here, there's your dinner. Here's some wine for you, sir. <laughs> Here's your Brussels sprouts. Yeah. You're Here's, almighty. <laughs> Would you like a glass of wine with that, dear? Here's some wine. Yeah. Now, about like the, the Big Bang. Yeah. Right? You know, I'd like to ask him some of those questions. Interesting, Brian Cox, Professor Brian Cox, does a great interview. He's on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he had a, a meeting with some um, bishops uh, at the uh, in London, uh, just a general sort of conference, mm. you know, science with re- with religion. And he posed a very good. It's getting more and more likely a lot of scientists going to the the phrase that the universe is uh, eternal. It's always been here. And his question to the bishops were, well, if that is the case, why is there, why do you need to create a creator god? in a universe that's eternal which I think is a very very obviously mm. I didn't have an answer I think it's a very very good question you know what was before the Big Bang well if you're at my dinner party you can, well, I can ask them. God that you could because what if it's Thor I hope Thor knows as, you, Thor. as you pour the wine and ask him and see what he says but I just mm. think because Christians like wine don't they what an they? interesting guest to have I mean he probably never gets invited for dinner <coughs> I think everyone would be too frightened to ask him wouldn't they <laughs> well, they'd be like I mean, listen, love. You're having dinner. You're at, you, you, what's what says in the room stays in the room. Here's your wine. But he knows what we're thinking anyway. Well, he Cause, would because he thought you know. So he'd probably be answering my questions before I ask them. Yeah. But I just thought how an intro. And what would he dress as? He could come as anything he liked. Yeah, because obviously, like it's um, I could have a party with a theme. A, oh yeah, a dinner party yeah. with a thing. That would work. And what would God wear? What would God wear? Yeah. What would God wear to a party? I'd have mm. a great. I'd, I'd have a million questions for him. And how would? You, and what would? And what would he look like? You know, what 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 appearance would he have for mm. that party? Because yeah. they change, like they did in Game of Thrones with the faceless mm-hmm. men. He, oh, that's know, freaky, wasn't it? They change. Yeah. So, like into the day, yeah. I just think he'd be a very. Inter- I'd have a lot of questions to ask. That's him. very good. That's uh, a very also good one. about life and why this, that and the other. And 
an atheist, I would have a lot of questions. You would. I'm a, when I say atheist, I'm not athe- I'm atheist to religion. I'm would, not atheist to uh, spirituality. I would not put you next to God, though. Cause no, you, it might be a bit awkward. You would talk to him all night. Well, no, because <laughs> if he was there, he proved his existence. Yeah, so um, I'd have millions of questions for him. So you're uh, number four. My number four. My number four is oh yeah. Now this is uh, Sam. My after all what we talk about, a guy called Hamish Miller. The reason I've got this chap who called Hamish Miller, he reintroduced, he got me into dowsing, uh, earth energy currents and all that with the rods. So God, God, God now we go right back down again. Um, but Hamish Miller, now he wrote a fantastic book in the 1980s called The Son of the Serpent, where he and Paul Broadhurst rediscovered an ancient ley line earth energy current called the Michael and Mary current that goes from uh, Cornwall up to the Norfolk coast and out into the sea. And it's a twin earth energy current. But he was he was an amazing dowser, uh, well renowned uh, around the world. Who moved to Cornwall? He had a life changing experience in his fifties. Uh, after having sort of, I think he had an out of body, a real incredible out of body experience. He's, he talks about it on YouTube. He's no longer with us. He died, uh, God, in two thousand and ten, uh, eighty four, I think it was. Um, but he had a life changing experience and went down to Cornwall, started dowsing and being a blacksmith and wow. doing and lots of healing work. Um, and he, he man. as a figure, he's the one who got me slightly into the paranormal mm-hmm. and things, things that are not I remember black and white. Yeah. So I say Hamish Miller, um, and he's a very humble guy as well. Really, I love to have met him. Love to have met him. He'd have a few questions for God as well. Um, but yeah, his his story about his uh, his uh, NDE was fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. I'm noticing there's all men at these parties. We've not got a woman. Guest. We haven't. Well. Oh my god! Well, my I've just real. That's awful, isn't it? Yeah, there's not. There's kind of like a not even. Will be there? Stevens. Well, yeah, I'd be the only woman, wouldn't I? Okay. Well, he's men. Oh, I, right. Okay, I'll come. I'll come back. So yeah, Hamish Miller would be mine. I'm trying to think now because I was just thinking. I was thinking. Oh, hang on. I haven't got a woman on my table. Elizabeth the first. Yeah, no, but you see, but no, I can't because you said if we had a dinner party, who would we invite? Well, Elizabeth the first. First of all, wouldn't understand what we're saying because. We can actually understand the English language. Oh, no, we probably she would. would. She we would. probably you can. I think you can understand modern English going back to about the fourteen hundreds, about sixty percent. But I mean, she's not on my list, so I can't include it's her because I I struggled with the fifth one because there were so mm-hmm. many people I could have invited. Mm-hmm. So I might many. Be able to huh? Am I there? Well, yeah, but you know. You squeezed in at number seven, haven't you? Because you're like, we're at five, I'm six, and I, so the right. mark would be seven. Really difficult choice, really difficult choice, because there was a lot of people I wanted to put on that list. But I have to say, somebody, if I could bring, if I could have someone at my dinner table, it would be my uncle. Okay. My uncle John. I would bring him back. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are so many people my, my stepdad has. I'd like to see him as well, my nan, etc. But I miss my uncle, and I would love to have him down for a dinner party because he loved his food. He loved a good part, loved a good, you know, a good uh, a knees up. A knees up. Um, and I think, although I think he would be completely over overwhelmed with some of the guests. God, you know, uh, <laughs> Kenny Everett. And Freddie Mercury yeah, yeah. and John Candy. I think he would be over. I think him and John, the two Johns, might get on. But I would have him back in a heartbeat just yeah. to have that moment with him again and cook him a meal and say, "Did you miss this? In, did mm. you miss this in heaven? You know, because he loved his food. Christmas dinner was his one of his favourites. Oh, he's coming over to you now. Look, oh, he loves you. Oh. And uh, no washing. We no. went through that before in the summer. Don't need to wash. So I would definitely I say week. my Uncle John and I would be... But the hardest thing would be letting him go at the end of the evening. <laughs> sorry, that's, I'm sorry. That's like, well, thanks very much for coming down. <laughs> yeah, bye. See you later, bye. <laughs> See you soon. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I'd, that would be the hardest thing is letting him go. But I would love to have him... Because, you know, live or dead, we said. And most of mine are sadly dead. Actually, all of mine are dead. <laughs> But their physical bodies are dead. Yeah. We're not talking about the consciousness. But I think John would be... We've got to do a podcast about the paranormal. We have so much to talk about We've got that coming, though. Yeah. Oh, Henry's gone. Now, we can get closer. We can get closer. But I think John definitely would be That's nice. somebody I'd like to I've not done back. family members. I've seen my dad again. You know, I lost him when I was 14. Um, 
which is, you know, not not cool when you're 14 years old. No. Um, but yeah, it's a nice one. That's a nice one. I Very just nice. think he, he would be, you know, it would just be lovely to have him, to see him again, to talk to him. Yeah. And and it, it's a dinner party. Come down. And I'm sure he'd be here in a heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as I said, the hardest thing would be letting them go. Actually letting all my dinner guests go because they're all bloody entertaining. Yeah, I know. Freddie, see you. Over um, to you. Your last one. My last one would be um, someone I've been following for about... Oh, gosh. Seriously, about five years. But I've known about him for about 15 years. Go on, Henry. Uh, this, is a guy, this is not an entertainer. Dr. Joe Dispenza. Oh, I've talked yeah. about him before. Yeah. He's a guy who does a lot of healing uh, through meditation. Um, he's a, one of the, the world's greatest speakers. You won't see him on national television or that kind of thing. He, sell, he did a London retreat uh, about two weeks ago, sold it out at the London Excel Centre. London Excel Centre, a yeah. week long retreat of healing, meditation, um, and what he does, it absolutely revolutionises the way people heal. And what he does, like Wim Hof does, who knows Wim Hof, the ice man who does the breathing, mm. he has scientists and uh, experiments going on on these retreats to measure people's brain waves. Right? And then he's got people there who've automatically reduced uh, something like stage four breast cancer. It's gone within the end of the retreat. Mm. Um, and always a remarkable healing it's all about meditation it's all about it's going into a bit the law of attraction the law of vibration where you that's why praying doesn't really work because you're praying for something that doesn't exist you're praying for something out there that's not come to you yet mm. but if you practice gratitude that's a good podcast to do about gratitude which I try and do every day practice gratitude you're, you're saying thank you to something that, that has already happened although it might not have in the physical realm but it has in the ether and out mm. into the uh, unified field he calls it the unified field which I like quite like that you know the ether um, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, Dr. Joe Dispenza would definitely be some of that. You know, I think even God will be starting to stop and listen to Dr. Joe. Yeah. Um, he'd Are be we do- joining our dinner tables together then? Yeah, absolutely. It'd be great, <laughs> wouldn't it? Um, I think he's one of the most fascinating people I've ever come across. Um, I, uh, as, a, as a sort of cynical bloke, I do have some questions, but he always come across really humble. And you see so many interviews with him, you know, millions of hits. Um, it's incredible how he does this. Basically, what happened was back in the 1980s. I'll be very quick. 1980s, he had a he was doing a he was on a mo- uh, doing a, a cycle ride uh, around. I think it was in Boston, and had a, uh, an accident on his bike. A car crashed into him and broke all his spine. And he healed his spine just by thought alone yeah. in the hospital. Yeah. He knew he'd stay in there. The he, power wo- of he said they wanted to do surgery. He didn't want the surgery. He thought, no, that that's going to make me um, handicapped all my life. So basically he was sitting in bed and he was literally going through his mind, all the vertebrates all linking back together again. And he, did, he was back in his office within about six months. This is back in his 20s, he's like 58 now. He doesn't yeah. look it though, he looks about 40. Um, so yeah, I was oh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, I've actually thought of some, I mentioned Wim Hof. I'd have Wim Hof there as well. Hang on, you just squeeze. I know. Squeeze I've, got, I've got to have Wim. I've got to have Wim. <laughs> Hello, just breathe, motherfucker. Please breathe. The guy who knows Wim Hof is, the ice man. Uh, about the powerful breathing. I do a lot of breath work. I think breath work is, is the key to good health, is breath work. Um, amongst, you know, good diet-ish. I don't say I have a particularly good diet, a balanced diet, but breath work is very, very important, the oxygen you get in. But Wim Hof I'd have as well. See, if I could squeeze... If, I, if you're squeezing... Yes, yeah, squeezing, darling. I would have um, Sid James. <laughs> <laughs> because he would be hilarious. Yeah. I would have Henry VIII. Well, that would Bastard. I would have Henry. He's a horrible Aker. sod. But I, I would have him at my table. But have more, have, or actually, no, it'd be fine. We've got God there. God's there. He's, it, he's gonna keep everyone in line. You created what religion in my name? He'll say exactly. Well, can you imagine that conversation? Henry would actually. You're discover, going down. You know. Henry would discover that. And yes, it's interesting you say because the other two that I would have had, one would have been Elvis Presley. Because I really admired the I name. worked with Priscilla Presley a couple of years ago. I would have had Elvis in a heartbeat. And the other one would be the devil. Oh, you've got fictional characters coming in now. Well, I think you can't have light without dark and you can't have good without bad. You know, you, you've got you've to have both. Can you imagine the two of them at a dinner table? There's a great sketch. Remember the comedy series Big Train on BBC One? Mm. There's a great sketch between the devil and, uh, God, and uh, Jesus. 
played by Jesus was played by Mark Heap and Kevin Eldon played the devil it's really funny and it's all in an office setting it's done really naturally it's really funny you couldn't put them would you put them next door to each other or would you put them opposite probably oh or at different awkward, ends it? what would you do I think opposite ends so you're at the end God yeah and, uh, and, and you up here Lucifer right and we have to ask but what if God was maybe Zeus there's no. no Satan in Zeus mythology. You're going to have to find that one out, aren't mm. you? What are you cooking for your dinner? I'm, as I'm a terrible cook, but I do a good roast. So it'd be roast dinner. I'd be a roast dinner, fine wine. You see, my what would I do? And I would prob- my favourite is Christmas dinner. But um, oh, I'd, beautiful! Yeah, I'd probably say I would do a roast too. How can we can't have the same dinner? Oh no! Um, what are we um, going we'll to do? What about pudding? Dessert? I well, I don't eat dessert well if you had to have one but I don't eat dessert they'd have to lump it well you've got you've got oh I'd get a cake from Sainsbury's or something you've got to do a three course oh no well starters as well I'd be fill up I'd be fill I'd I'd do fasting I'd be fill up by the starters think of a starter you did like soup oh yeah because you drank that all over the floor don't you (laughs) <laughs> so the first one would be soup then it down be... what's the down video you'll know what we're talking about <laughs> and then it was roast dinner and the third one um the pudding i don't because the thing i don't ever think about is pudding i don't even eat cake because it's too sugary mm-hmm. um i don't know i really don't know wow you that's got me there you up. yeah no no i no, would no. have creme, i have very little sugar creme brulee Creme brulee. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would probably have the roast and and uh, and creme, br- you know, all the Yorkshire pudding and roast potatoes oh, and lovely. everything, like a Christmas dinner. And then uh, for bits to starters, I'd probably have something like, um, God, fruit and ham or something like that. You know, something quite light and tasty. I'd be full. This problem down started. If I went for a meal and had starter, I'd be full up. You'd have to starter. fast for days before you come to me. I know. You'd have to be like, I'm starving. What feed about, me. What time do I start eating today? It's four o'clock. Yeah, about four o'clock. So that's what I'd. That's what I'd okay. pick. Very cool. So can we mix and match these? I two? think we can mix and match. Can you imagine? There's no. I'm the only woman. I oh, know. I'm so sorry about that. What that? What does that say about us? Um, Shows who our wonderful. mentors are, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 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 do we, let's think of a famous woman that we'd or, or a woman you would have at your table. A woman who I'd have at my table. <laughs> so, so wrong. <laughs> so sorry. I've got Wendy. We've got Wendy. We've got Wendy. Bless you, son. And all, 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 everyone will be even got to be saying, "Oh no, I'm over here. I'm talking. Stop looking at Wendy." Bless you. Know, you. Do you know what I mean? Um, I would have. Um, I'd probably go with Sarah Silverman, the comedian. Ah. Oh. Or Joan Rivers. I like I like fam- funny women. Joan Rivers. Now Joan that Rivers, would hilarious. be entertaining, wouldn't it? Yeah, she's so funny. Yeah, I'd go with probably Joan Rivers. Oh my God, you're going to ask me now, aren't you? Um, here's an interesting one, and it probably would go down quite well with with God, Joan of Arc. <laughs> <laughs> comedian Joan of Arc God she'd be a barrel of lard wouldn't she yeah, but, but think of it like think of it all around the table you've got the God and Devil and Freddie and Kenny and they're like so, so I assume we all speak French so love yeah you're like a good fire <laughs> yeah <laughs> but we don't speak French you want to understand what we're but saying but God is there and he can he can translate he, okay. it's like, and Tom Baker's there Ah. Oh! Yeah. Uh, can you imagine him with June? June, darling, how are you? And you remember when we went down Soho that night? Ah. So you can t- see. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to put Joan somewhere between Sid and Freddie. Isn't it think- interesting? My brother, I think my brother, the old classic comedians of the seventies. I mean, no, poor old Sid Jane died quite early. Yeah, only sixty-three did. or something 62, like that. Sixty-two. Yeah. Yes, he didn't look about eighty. Yeah. But they lived the life, didn't they? They and lived he died the life. On stage. Yeah. Like everyone thought he was joking. Like they no, that was that wasn't. Yeah, no, they, you did dance. Yeah, you were thinking, I thought you were thinking about um, uh, Tommy Cooper, Tommy, the funniest man ever who ever. But lived. I mean, um, a poor old Sid was on stage and there were is on a play and she sat down next door to him, the actress talking to him, and thinking, why isn't he answering the next part of the script? And heard this noise, and he'd gone. Yeah. You know, he was, or rather, he yeah. was. You know, and but I think what a great he was such a great actor as well. It wasn't just mm. all the carry on stuff. He was really well known for playing a, a bad boy, a tough boy, mm. um, and he was really taken too soon. Yeah, yeah. So Sid and Joan, I think, would be a great. You know, imagine it. So Joan, Sid Jane, the Joan of Arc. So Joan, tell me. <laughs> 
Did you see Man About the House? Uh, no, uh, um, uh, Bless His House. Bless His House. Oh, God. Robin Asquith, who was in our panto a few years back, actually, he tweets about that all the time, uh, about his time with the Bless His House and how, what he owes to Sid James. And because Robin Williams would be another one. Oh. Now, I don't like the word genius. To me, genius should be safe for people who are scientists. But he's a genius. He was a genius. Genius, yeah. He was a genius. And apparently a bloody nice bloke in all. So, oh my goodness me! He would be between Freddie and Kenny and and John. Big and bloody dinner party this now. This now gone to a party, Apart from God, yeah. right? And they're all sitting back, you know, you know, the devil's on rum and God's on whiskey or something. You know, it, it's what a great party! Yeah. I want to do this now. I want to see God sloshed. <laughs> Can you imagine the decisions he'd make yeah, while he was drunk? Yeah. Let's just. Let's just like lower that uh, thing and push this up there. He could do anything. Yeah. Which God though? So who would you invite to your dinner party? Yeah. So after who would you invite to yours? I know we've taken a lot of guests. Here. Yeah, we have actually. It's gonna be a big but. dinner party. We've got a big table though, don't yeah. we? Yeah. Um, but thank you. There's for always room at our table. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. I like that. There is. Um, thank you very much for joining us on this podcast. Yep. That's a really been interesting. It's been topic. a very interesting topic. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, who would you have used your dinner? Bed? Let's why? keep it at five if you can. Try and keep it at yeah. five. Uh, put it in the comments below or on. If and you're who all... would you have and why? Yeah. And what would you serve them? Yeah. What? Yeah. What would you serve them? Yeah. But thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. And um, we'll see you next time. Where we'll be talking more frivolous stuff. <laughs> on strangely us. On strangely us podcast. See you later, guys. Bye.